Ashley Brock reading Nora Roberts' book, Rising Tides, Chapter 15. <clears throat> so, I don't know if I'm going to go out with him anymore because he's getting way too possessive, you know? I don't want to hurt his feelings, but you gotta live, right? Julie Cutter crutched into the shining green apple she'd plucked out of the fruit bowl in Grace's kitchen. She felt every bit as much at home there as she did next door. Comfortable. She hitched herself up to sit on the counter while Grace folded laundry on the table. Plus, Julie went on. Gesturing with her apple. I met this incredibly cute guy. He works at the computer store at the mall. He wears these little metal frame glasses. That's the sweetest smile. She grinned, lighting up her pretty heart shaped face. I asked him for his phone number, and he blushed. You asked him for his phone number. Grace was listening with only half an ear. She loved it when Julie came over just to visit. She was always so full of fun and talking energy, but today it was hard to concentrate. Her mind was so full of what happened between her and Ethan in those shady woods. But that had left out of him to devour her, and why had it left him so distant afterward? Sure. Julie cocked her head, her brown eyes full of humor. Didn't you ever ask a guy out? Come on, Grace. We're the dawn of the next millennium here. Most of them really like it when the woman takes the initiative. Anyway, shook back her long full fall of straight as a pin brown hair. Jeff did the sexy compu Jeff did the sexy computer nerd. He got all flustered at first, but then he gave it to me, and when I called him, I c could tell he was happy about it, so we're going out Saturday, but I have to break up with Dawn first. <laughs> Poor Dawn! <laughs> Grace murmured and glanced over absolutely at Aubrey, knocked over, knocked over the black tower she'd been building, then applauded its destruction. Oh, he'll get over it, Julie said. It's not like he's in love with me or anything, he's just used to having a chick. Grace had to smile. A few months earlier, Julie had been wild about Dawn, rushing over to tell Grace every detail of their dates, or Grace suspected at least in an edited version of their dates. You told me Dawn was the one. He was, Julie laughed. For a while, I'm not ready for the only one yet. <laughs> Grace was in the refrigerator and forced the three of them a drink. At Julie's age, 19, she'd be pregnant, married, and worried about paying bills. She was only three years older than Julie, but it might as well have been 300. <clears throat> You're right to look around to be sure. She handed Julie a glass, held her gaze for a minute. To be careful. I'm careful, Grace. Julie assured her touch. I'd like to be married one day, especially if it means having a baby as beautiful as Aubrey. But I want to finish college and then see some of the world. Do things, she added, just for one. I don't want to find myself tied down, changing diapers, and working at some dead-end job because I'd let some guy talk me into. She trailed off suddenly, sincerely applauded. Appalled at herself, eyes big and apologetic just because I don't... God, I'm sorry. I can be so thick sometimes. I didn't mean that you... It's all right. She gave Julie's armor quickly. That's exactly what I did. Exactly what I let happen to me. I'm glad you're smarter. I'm a moron. Julie murmured very close to you. I'm an insensitive clod. I'm a fool. <laughs> no, you're not. Grace gave a light laugh and picked up a pair of Aubrey's rompers from the basket. You don't hurt my. F you didn't hurt my feelings. I'd hate to think we were friends. We weren't friends enough for you to be able to say what you think. You're one of my best friends, and I've got a big mouth. <laughs> well, you do. Grace chuckled at Julie's wins, but I like it. I love Aubrey. And Grace, I know you do. Now stop worrying about it and tell me what you're going. What you're going with, Jeff, the cute computer guy. Safe date, movies and pizza. Julie let off a soft side of relief. She'd have shaved her head and dyed it purple. She decided before she'd do anything to her grace, hoping to make it up just a little for her insensitivity. She mean him. You know, I'd be happy to keep Bobby on your next night off if you and Ethan want to go out. It's a bit full of the rompers. Let's start it on socks. She stops staring with a tiny white sock trimmed to yellow. In each hand. What? <laughs> you know, catch a movie, go to a restaurant, whatever. Sugar bros on the whatever. The father buy back and grin at Grace's expression. You're not going to stand there and tell me you're not seeing these and Gwen. Well, he's I'm. She looked hopelessly down at Aubrey. If it was supposed to be a secret, he should be parking his truck somewhere other than your driveway on the nights he sleeps over. Oh, God. <laughs> What's the problem? It's not like you're having this illicit affair like Mrs. Wiggins has been having with Mrs. Lurie on Monday afternoons at the motel on Route 13. That Grace is struggling sound. Julie just shrugged. My friend Robin's working there and taking night classes at the college, and she says how he checks in every Thursday morning at 1030 while she waits in her car. Anyway. You must, you must, 
Well, Mr. Mother's Day, Grace whispered, Mom, about Mr. Wiggins? Well, no, no, Grace didn't want to think about the poorly Mr. Wiggins' weekly mom broom. About, oh, you and Ethan? I think she said something about high time. Mom's not an idiot. He's such a hunk, Julie said with feeling. I mean, the way he feels out a t-shirt is awesome. And that smile, it takes like ten minutes for it to finish moving over his face. By then, man, you are drooling. Robin and I went down to the waterfront every day for a month last summer just to watch him overflow his crap. <laughs> Craps. You did? Grace said weakly. We both built a real case on him. She reached into the white stone wall cookie jar, found two old milk cookies. I flirted with him big time whenever I got the chance. You flirted with Ethan? Mm hmm. She thought was cookie. Really put some effort into it. Mostly I think it embarrassed him, but I get a couple of great smiles out of him. She smiled sun suddenly when Grace kept saying, Oh, I'm way over now, so don't worry. Good. Grace picked up the drink. She neglected the drink deeply. That's good. Still, he's got a terrific butt. Oh, Julie! Grace hit her lip to keep from giggling and sent a meaningful look toward her daughter. She's not listening. So anyway, how to get started on this? Oh yeah, I'll keep Bobby for if you want to go out. I will, thanks. She was trying to decide if she wanted to get well off the subject of Ethan Quinn or lingering on it when she heard a knock and saw him standing at her front door. Like magic, Julie murmured. And romantic romance bloomed in her heart. You know, why don't I take Aubrey over to see Mom for a while? Let's just keep her and feed her dinner. But I don't have to leave for work for nearly an hour yet, Julie wrote out. So make good use of the time, pal. Then <laughs> scoot Aubrey up. Wanna go to my house, Aubrey? See my kitty cat? Ooh, kitty, bye, Mama. Oh, but they were already sailing out her back door. With Aubrey calling for the kitty and waving maddenly, she looked at Ethan again, staring at his face, was green and lifted. Her hands, he decided to take it as an invitation. She said, I mean, what was that? Was that Julie who ran off with Aubrey? Yes, she's gonna let Aubrey play with her kitten and have dinner over there. It's nice you have someone like Julie to look after. I'd be lost without Julie. Puzzled Grace angled her head. He was standing awkwardly and had a tin top on his back. Is something wrong? Did you hurt your hand? No. Listen, <laughs> what an idiot he was. He's the thought offering her the flowers he had held about him. I thought you might like some. He waited desperately to find ways to make up to her for the way he treated her in the woods. He brought me flowers? I stole some here and there. You may not want to mention it to Anna. I got the tiger lilies off the side of the road. They're blooming thick this year. He picked her flowers, not store-bought flowers, but once he'd stopped and selected and plucked with his own hands. On a long, trembling sigh, she buried her face in them. They're beautiful. They made me think of you. Almost everything does. And when she lifted her head, when he saw that her eyes were stunned and soft, he wished he had more words, better ones, smooth ones. I know you, I know you only have the one night off now. I'll have to take you to dinner if you don't have any plans. To dinner? There's a place Anna and Cam like up in Prince Anne. Suit and tie, please, but they claim the food's worth it. Would you like to? She realized she was nodding her head like a fool made herself stop. I'd like that. I'd like that. I'll come by for you about six thirty. There went her head popping again like a spring robin duck on worms. Fine, that'll be fine. I can't stay now because they're expecting me at the boatyard. That's all right. She wanted to hear if her eyes were as huge as they felt. She ended up devouring with them. Thanks for the flowers. They're lovely. You're welcome. With his eyes open, he leaned over, laid his lips on hers very gently, very softly. He watched her lashes flutter, watched the green of her iris go misty under those tiny flips of gold. I'll see you tomorrow night, then. Her muscles had turned to buddy. Tomorrow? She managed to breathe out a long, long sigh as he walked away and out her front door. He brought her flowers. She clasped the stems of both hands, held them out, and waltzed through the house with them. Beautiful, fragrant, soft, pelted flowers. And then some of those petals drifted to the floor as she danced and only made the scene more romantic. They made her feel like they made her feel like a princess, like a woman. She sniffed them lavishly as she circled back into the kitchen for a vase. Like a bride, she stopped abruptly staring at him. Like a bride. Oh my, oh, her legs wanted to fold, so she sat down right on the floor of the kitchen when the floor, flowers cradled in her arms like a child. Flowers, tender kisses, a romantic dinner for two. He was courting her. No, no, she was jumping to conclusions. He would never move that quickly to the next step. She shook her head. 
picked herself up and found an old wide mouse bottle for a vase. He was just being sweet. He was just being considerate. He was just being Ethan. She turned on the faucet and filled the bottle. Just being Ethan. She thought again and found her breath gone a second time. Being Ethan. He was thinking he would do things in a certain manner. Struggling for calm, for logic, she began to arrange the precious flowers stem by stem. They had known each other for. She could hardly remember not knowing him. Not. Now they were lovers, they were in love. Being Ethan, he would consider marriage the next step, honorable, traditional right. He would believe in right. She understood that, but expected it to be months yet before he drifted in that direction. Yet why would he wait, she asked herself, when they already waited for years. But, she had promised herself, she would never marry again. She made that vow as she signed her name on the divorce papers. She couldn't fail so miserably at something ever again, or risk putting Aubrey through the misery and trauma. She made the decision that she would raise Aubrey alone, raise her well, raise her with love, that she herself would provide, would build the home, tend it, where her daughter could grow up happy and safe. But that was before she had let herself believe Ethan would ever want them, would ever love her the way she loved him. Because it had always been Ethan, always Ethan, she thought, closing her eyes, in her heart, in her dreams. Did she dare break her promise, one she had made so solemnly? Could she risk being a wife again, penit pinning her hopes and heart on another man oh yes yes she could risk anything if the man was ethan so right so perfect she thought laughing to herself as her head and heart went light with joy it was happy ever after that she stopped letting herself yearn for how would he ask she pressed her fingers to her lips and those lips trembled and curved quietly she thought with his eyes so serious so intent on hers he would take her hand in that careful way of his they'd be outside with moonlight and breezes with the sense of night all around them and the musical lap of water close by simple she thought without poetry or fuss he would look down at her saying nothing for a long minute then he would speak without hurry i love you grace i always will will you marry me Yes, 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 she shut herself in a giddy circle. She would be his bride, his wife, his partner, his lover, now and forever. She could give her child to him, knowing without hesitation that he would love and cherish, would protect and tend. She would have more children with him. Oh, God, eat this child grown inside her, overwhelmed by the image. She pressed her hands to her stomach, and this, this time, life that fluttered inside her would be wanted and welcomed by both who made it. They would make a life together, a wonderful, thrilling, simple life. She couldn't wait to begin it. Tomorrow night, she remembered, and in a sudden panic, pushed out her hair, dropped her hands to look at them in utter despair. Oh, she was a mess. She needed to look pretty. <laughs> what would she wear? <laughs> she caught herself laughing, the laughter full of joy and nerves. For once she fought, forgot work and schedules and responsibility, and raced to her closet. Anna didn't notice the stolen flowers till the next day. Then she noticed them with a shout. Seth! Seth, you come out here right now! She had her hands on her hips, her sassy straw hair askew, her eyes snapping in danger. Yeah, he came out munching a handful of pretzels. The dinner was simmering on the Have you been messing with my flowers? She demanded. He slid a glance down to the mixed bed of annuals and pernales and snorted. What? Why would I be messing with stupid flowers for? she tapped her foot that's what i'm asking you i never touched them hey you don't even want us to pull up weeds that's because you don't know the difference between a weed and a daisy she snapped well somebody's been in my flower beds was it me he shrugged and rolled his eyes in glee she stormed past him into the house somebody said thought was in big in for big time Cameron! She stopped upstairs to the bathroom where he was washing up from work, glanced over, looking brown as water dripped from his face and tuned the sink. She scrapped for a minute and she cried, Never mind! She might have slammed the door. Cameron would no more fiddle with her garden than Seth, she decided. I mean, if he was picking flowers for any of damn well better be for his loving wife. Or she'd just murder him and be done with it. Her eyes narrowed on the door to Ethan's room. She made a low threatening sound in her throat. She did stop to knock, though it was only three. She turned her wraps before she simply pushed open the door. Christ, Anna. One fight, Ethan snatched up the slacks they lay on his bed. Held them in front of him. He was wearing nothing but his briefs and a pained expression. Just save the modesty. I'm not interested. Have you been into my flowers? <laughs> into. Uh into your flowers oh, oh he'd known this was coming the woman had asked like a cat when it came to her posies but he hadn't expected the moment to come when he was half naked half hell he thought <laughs> clutched the slacks more firmly somebody snapped off more than a dozen blooms snapped them right off <laughs> she advanced on them her eyes scanned in the room for evidence uh well pro <coughs> problem 
came leaning on the door jam, tongue and cheek. It was an amazing sight after a hard day's work. He decided his well riled wife stalking around his all but bare ass brother. Somebody's been in my garden and they stole my flowers. No kidding. Want me to call the cops? Oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. She whirled back to Ethan. Took a cautious and cowardly step in retreat. She looked fit for murder. Well, well, what? He intended to confess, throw himself on her mercy. <coughs> but the woman glared at him. Had a dark, furious eyes, looked several courts low on mercy. Rabbits, he said slowly. Probably. Rabbits? Yeah. He shifted uncomfortable, wishing to crash. He's at least gotten his pants on. Force burst in. Rabbits can be a problem with gardens. They just hop up and help themselves. Rabbits? She said again. Could be a deer. He <laughs> had yeah, just a little desperately. They graze over and eat every damn thing down to stuff. <laughs> Coming on pit count on pity, shot a look at Cam. Right. <laughs> Cam weighed the situation. And when I was a city girl enough to buy it. <laughs> oh, he's a widow him for this. He's a silence mom. Oh yeah. Deer and rabbits. Big problem. Which <laughs> having two dogs on the same same pretty much eliminated you. <laughs> Why didn't anybody tell me? She whipped off her hat, rubbing against her thigh. <laughs> what do we do about it? How do we make them stop? <laughs> Couple ways. Guilt stung. Just a little bit easy and rationalized. The deer and rabbits could be a problem. So she should take precautions anyway. Dried blood. Dried blood? Who's? You can buy it at the garden store and you just dump it around. It'll keep them away. Dried blood? Her lips first as she made a mental note to buy some. For urine. Right, you're no, <laughs> he's clear, so just go out and you know, around so they smell and know there's a meat eater in the facility. I see, she nodded satisfied, then we're on our son. Well, get out there, then and pee on my miracle. Could use a beer first, Camp said, and winked at his brother. Don't worry, darling, we'll take care of it. All right, call her, she out of Sorry, Ethan. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> he waited until she hurried out and lowered himself to the edge of his bed. He's <laughs> to look at Cam. Can he to lean against the door? That wife of yours has a streak of mean in her. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Why do you steal her flowers? <coughs> I just needed a few of them. <laughs> He's a muttered fool on his pants. What the hell are they? Why the hell are they out there if you get your head cut off for picking them? Rabbits and deer. <laughs> Can't forget who was laughing. The garden pest is right now, uh, right enough. Pretty brave rabbits who hop between two dogs and ride up to the house to select a few flowers they got that floor. They'd mow the whole garden down to the ground. She doesn't have to know that for a while. Appreciate you backing me up. Thought she was going to punch me. She might have. Since I've saved your pretty face, I figure you owe me. Nothing comes free. He's in trouble. Socked his glasses for a shirt. <laughs> you got that right. Seth needs a haircut, and he's already outgrown his last pair of shoes. <laughs> he's in dirt street. Turgle through his fingers. You want me to take him to the mall? Right again. I'd rather have to punch you in the face. <laughs> Too late. Can't <laughs> hook the thumb in his front pocket and grin. So, why do you need the flowers? Just thought Grace would like them. Mother and Ethan <laughs> chucked into his shirt. Who's and Quinn stealing flowers, going out voluntarily to a jack inside a restaurant. Cam's grinning wide. His eyebrows wiggled. Straight over his business. It's the usual thing for a man to take a woman out to dinner, bring her flowers now and then. <laughs> Not for you, it isn't. Cam straight, patting his slap belly. Well, I guess I'll go choke down that beer so I can be a hero. Man's got no privacy around here. He's a complaint. But Cam's all taken around. When women come right on into your bedroom. Don't even have the courtesy to leave when they say you don't have your pants on. <laughs> Scrowley tracked one of his two ties out of the closet. People ready to scan you alive over a few flowers. And the next thing you know, you're out the goddamn mall fighting crowds and buying shoes. He wrestled the tie under his collar. He had to deal with that. With the night. Never had to worry when I was in my own place. I could walk around butt ass naked if I wanted to. He hissed at the tie. He hissed at the tie to refuse to go up. I hate these fuck these fuckers. That's because you're happier tying a sheep snake. Who the hell wouldn't be? And he stopped, his fingers freezing on the side. Yeah, he straight. Stayed on the mirror where you could see his father behind him. You're just a little nervous, that's all. Ray said with a smile and went.
hot date. Taking a careful breath, he's in turn raced to the foot of the bed. His bright blue eyes merry, but he even remembered they would sparkle when he was particularly tickled about something. He's wearing a squash yellow t-shirt that sported a boat under full sail, faded jeans, and scuffed sandals. His hair was long, past his collar, and shining silver. He could see the gun sun glint on it. It looked exactly like what he was, had been, a robust and handsome man who appeared comfortable clothes and good eyed and a good laugh. I'm not dreaming, Ethan murmured. It was easier for you to think so at first. Hello, Ethan. Dad. I remember the first time you called me that. It took you a while to come to it. You've been with us about almost a year. Christ, <laughs> you were a spooky kid, Ethan. Quiet as a shadow, deep as a lake. One evening when I was grading papers, you knocked on the door. You just stood there for a minute thinking. God, it was marvelous to watch your brain, your mind work. And you said, Dad, the phone's for you. <laughs> a smile went right as sunlight. He slipped right out again, or you'd have seen me make a fool of myself, sniffling like a baby. And I have to tell whoever the hell it was on the phone I was having an allergic reaction. I never knew why you wanted me. You needed us. We needed you. You were ours, Ethan. Even before we found each other, fate takes its own sweet time, but it always finds a way. You were so fragile. Ray said after a minute and needs his blinking surprise. Stella and I were worried we'd do something wrong and break you. I wasn't fragile. Oh, Ethan, you were. Your heart was delicate as glass and waiting to be shattered. Your body was tough. We never worried about you and Cam pounding on each other those first months. Though it did both of you good, <laughs> Ethan's lips twitched. <coughs> he usually started the pounding. But you never were one to back off once your blood was up. Took some doing to get it up, yet yeah, it still does. We watched you watch and settle and think and consider. You gave me time. Time to watch and settle to think and consider. Everything I've got that's decent came from the two of you. Now, Ethan, we just gave you love. That time. In that place. He wandered over to the window. Looked out on the water and the boats that swayed gently at the dock. He watched an arrogant sail across the sky, haze with heat and plumbed by clouds. You were meant to be ours, meant to be here. Took to the water like you'd been born in it. Cam, he always just wanted to go fast, and Philip prepared to sit back and enjoy the ride. But you turned back around his gaze. You, you studied every inch of the boat, every wave, every turn of a river. You practiced tying knots for hours, and so nobody had to nag you into swabbing the decks. It came easy for me, right from the start. You wanted me to get a college degree. For me, Rachel said. For me, Ethan, fathers are human. After all, and I went through a time when I thought my sons needed to love schooling as much as I did. But you did what was right for you. You made me proud of you. I should have told you that more often. You always let me know it. Words count, though. He would have known that better than a man who spent his life trying to teach the young the love of them. He said, no. Words count, Ethan, and I know some of them come hard for you. But I want you to remember that. You and Grace have a lot to say to each other yet. I don't want to hurt her. <laughs> you will, Ray said quietly, but try not to. I wish you could see yourself as I do, as she does. She said, well, fate takes care of time. Think of the boy, Ethan. Think of Seth, and what pieces of yourself you see there. His mother, <laughs> Ethan again. Think of the boy for now, Ray said simply. Then he was gone. End of chapter 16. That wasn't end of chapter 16. That was end of chapter 15. Well, because it's all 16, because I'm getting ready to do the next chapter in about half an hour, 45 minutes. I said end of chapter 16, but that was end of chapter 15.